Um, at this point, let's start with uh, Senator Meyer, and we'll just go uh, we'll go down the line and give uh, each candidate one minute to give us uh, an opening statement. All right. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, it's always good to be the first one, I guess. Uh, my name is Kevin Meyer, and I'm currently uh, a senator, and I'm uh, representing, or running for Senate District, New Senate District L. And just let me describe to you what Senate District L. It starts on uh, Downing Road, goes south to Huffman, and basically everything uh, east of uh, the New Seward Highway up to Hillside Drive. So kind of the uh, service high uh, area. Um, my wife and I uh, have lived in Anchorage for over 30 years. We have two children. Uh, I have a master's degree in um, public administration and a master's degree in, in business. Um, I've been in, uh, let's see, I was on the Anchorage Assembly for eight years and then uh, went to the State House for eight years and I've been in the Senate now for four years. Most of my time in the House was on the Finance Committee. Um, currently in the Senate, I am the Majority Leader uh, and, and also the uh, uh, Co-Chair of uh, Education. And, uh, Hi. Yeah. Good evening, thank you for having us today. I'm Anna Fairclough and I'm a candidate for Senate District M. That's newly created District 25 and 26, Eagle River and East Anchorage. I've dealt, lived in Alaska for over 50 years. I have two well, they used to be small boys, but now one's a graduate of, from UAF. Both are volunteer firefighters. I've been a volunteer in our community for about 26 years, served in many different capacities. For the last six years, I've been in the state legislature and the last four in the House Finance Committee. Prior to that, I served for three terms on the uh, Anchorage Assembly. I left there to move to the state house. And it has been a pleasure to take on all issues, as specific for me are issues that are, involve kids, and our families. I've been a, a leader and a charger in uh, protecting our kids on the Council on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. So I look forward to issues important to Alaska and the conversation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Dan. Thank you. Good, afternoon. Good evening, everybody. I'm Betty Davis, Senator here in this district. The UVAD district is the part of the district that I've served and have served in for the last 10 years. I'm now running for Senate M, which is House 26 to 25. I've already been given the description that it's part of Eagle River and part of East Anchorage. I'm running again because I feel there's a lot of work that I have started that I would like to continue. And I would like to, for you to know that not only have I served on the Senate side, I also served on the House for six years, but I served 12 years on the school board nine consecutive years, six years in the House, and then back to serve another three years of the, at the school level. I believe that we need to do everything that we can to make this a better place for our students, our youth, our children. I care about families, and I care about health issues. I am a nurse and a social worker by profession, and I serve as chair of Health Education Social Service Committee. I'm vice chair of education, and I also serve on labor and commerce at the present time. Go ahead. Well, first of all, again, thank you for inviting us. I'm Bob Bell. Senate District J, which is basically everything from Campbell Lake through Turnigan west of Minnesota, with the exception of part of Spinard that's carved out there. I've lived here for over 40 years. I've run an engineering and surveying firm for 38 years. I have a degree in civil engineering from Washington State University, and I was three hours short of a master's degree in engineering management here at UAA back in the 70s, when my company went from four people to 80 people in two months and I never got back to finish that course. <laughs> so I'm kind of a sea wolf, just three hours short. Anyway, uh, I think the experience that I have in running a business, raising a family, Candace and I have raised five kids here, all of them college, college graduates. Time. And I guess I'm on time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you to the uh, students that are here tonight uh, that showed up. I wish there were more of you here, but for those of you that took the time, um, 
I commend you. When I was in college, I always went to these forums, and um, I just say thank you for participating in your government and um, and being a part of the process. And thank you, Casey, for for hosting this. Um, I am a Sea Wolf. I attended a few classes here. I'm a Willamette graduate. Um, in political science and speech communication and a Juris Doctorate from Willamette, but I also attended um, school here and I'm very proud to say that I'm a, a Sea Wolf. Lifelong Alaskan and lifelong in my district, a Diamond High graduate, Bayshore and Mears as well, and that was the main reason that I ended up running for office. I was pushed into it um, by neighbors because the quality of people at that time that were running, or their philosophy was not um, something that people felt would be representative. and. Um, Frankly, I guess I throw that out to you as future leaders as well, that that day may come. Um, my area is um, is Senate End, which is South Anchorage. It's the other half of Campbell Lake. It's Ocean View, Bayshore, and Taku Campbell. And um, I've got a lot of platforms. I hope to uh, talk about them more as we answer questions. But one of the most important, I think, to the university is innovation. Um, I've spent the last two years working on that particular area, and I think it's a growth sector for the economy. I am Rosalind Casey, uh, Senate District K, um, and I think education is vitally important to all of us. Um, I have been a um, director of the Adult Learning Center, which helped people that did not finish high school finish it, um, which part was part of UAA, and I currently teach at the um, university, and I was uh, got my master's from Fairbanks. Both the theory and the practice of education is very important, and that's why I'd like to thank the college Democrats and the Alaska College um, Republicans for putting on this forum. And I would encourage all of you to use your educational opportunities to find out more about the world, about job opportunities and other opportunities. When I was 18, I um, went to one of these fairs, and applied for a VISTA volunteer and ended up in a um, village in, along the Yukon. Thank you. I'm Berta Gardner. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here. I currently represent Midtown Anchorage in the State House and my district ends just at the corner of Lake Ogres and Northern Lights. Uh, I'm, I'm running for the new Senate seat H, and that's all the way across the middle of Anchorage, Bernard, through Midtown, on including the UMED district, and goes as far as Boniface. So, um, I, if I should win an election, I will pick up the university, and I'm very, very thrilled with that because my heart really is with children and with youth, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, I understand that in order to advocate for children, for families, for neighborhoods, we have to work on having jobs and a thriving economy here in Alaska. So I've been I've chosen to serve on the Resources Committee on the Community and Regional Affairs, Economic Development, Trade and Tourism, and like Anna Faircloth, um, she and I both are serving on the Suicide Prevention Council, Statewide Suicide Prevention Council. So um, I guess we'll get a chance to talk about more later. Hi, I'm State Senator Kathy Diesel. First, let me ask you a question. How many of you are currently University of Alaska students? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you are in two-year programs? Raise your hand. How about four-year programs? Graduate school. Okay, great, I like to know the audience. Well, my new district is District N. That's N as in new resource development, new, e new jobs, and new economy. Now, every one of my immediate family have attended the University of Alaska. My husband and I both attended here. My master's degree is from here. And all three of our children attended here. Sitting in the back row right over there are three future university students. They're only five, four, and two, but I think they'll be going here when they grow up. My main emphasis as I've served in the Senate has been resource development, jobs, and a robust economy. Because you know, I think you're finding, or will find, you don't learn everything you need to know in college. Time. We'll talk more later. Mr. Kendall, one minute. Thank you very much. I'm Paul, middle initial D, Kendall, and uh, I'm going to dispense with the formalities. First thing we need to understand is the protocol. 
So, Mr. Reynolds, uh, do I have the right of freedom of speech to be able to say whatever I want to say? Mr. Reynolds? Yeah. Okay. Hey, German. I, I have a lot of pro things. Uh, one of them is pro parity, proclivity for profanity when I'm upset. Ladies and gentlemen, your society is really in, in struggle. These people will wine and dine you all day long. I have never heard such talking and dodging conversations in my lifetime. I am an older male. I'm done with that foolishness. Let me list some of the issues I have of concern. Men marrying men. It's perverted. It's unacceptable. All of these people want to go to Juno. Why in the hell would I go to Juno? Let me put something on the line to you. You can't be a vivacious, engaging, asset-rich, uh, problem-solving society and have your brains hang out in Beijing, Juno. That's a common sense understanding. These people know if they make it to Juno that they're inaccessible. Thank you very much for that brief awkward moment there. And if you can speak up next time, uh, I'll try harder this time. All right, everybody has panels in front of them. Look at your panel, you got a yes, no. We're gonna do some uh, yes, no questions here. Some of them are going to be fun. Okay, uh, let's start with the, uh, the Alaska State Constitution states that uh, the people own minerals and resources of the state collectively. Do you agree with that uh, policy in the state constitution? Okay. Do you think Romney's 47% deserve his attention if he's elected president? So, the 47% that Mitt Romney referred to, uh, the question uh, from the college Republicans slash college Democrats says, uh, do you think he, uh, those 47% deserve his attention? Okay. Do you support gay marriage? Oh, do you support gay marriage? Yes. Uh, have you received union funds? Okay, I want you to think about this one. Will you be getting an iPhone 5? <laughs> Alright, it's important. It's important. Do you agree with this statement? I support a tax on consumption, not on production. Okay. Can resource development and fishing slash hunting coexist? Have you ever lived in Bush, Alaska? Okay, were you born in Alaska? Did you go to school in Alaska? Do you own a gun? Ten years ago, did you think you'd be running for the state legislature? Well, some of you were in the legislature ten years ago, right? <laughs> Is, uh, is Alaska too dependent on federal money? Do you pray? Do you support Pebble Mine? Do you support Pebble Mine? Uh, maybe? Okay. Do you uh, support a state, a state sales tax? All right, you're, now listen closely. Answer yes if you prefer the Rolling Stones, no if you prefer the Beatles. Yes for the Rolling Stones, no for the Beatles. No Rolling Stones people on stage? No love for the Rolling Stones? Okay, okay, Senator McGuire. All right, yes if you prefer Scotch whiskey, no if you prefer vodka martinis. Yes for Scotch, no for vodka martinis. Okay. All right, that is the uh, yes-no portion. Now we're going to go to the, uh, the portion where uh, at random, we'll uh, draw a question for each of the candidates. Half of these questions were written by the College Democrats, half by the College Republicans. Uh, if there's a, a, a race where both candidates are running against each other, we'll ask both candidates the same question, give each two minutes. Um, if only one of the candidates in the race are here, we'll give them uh, that question and then move on. Uh, so you have two minutes to answer each of these questions. Uh, let's start with uh, Senator Meyer right here on the end. What is your definition uh, and position on education reform? 
Okay, well I appreciate that question. Uh, as the education chairman, we spent a lot of time on that issue on, in, uh, in our education committee. And I think uh, one, one of the problems that we have is that we uh, assume all the kids going to school want, want to go to college. And the reality is only about 45 to 50% actually do go to college. So you've got 50% of the kids there that, that uh, are disconnected because they don't understand why they have to take these, these tough classes. Um, so I think we, we need to uh, encourage more Botech, uh, Botechnical education. In fact, that was one of my bills was to now allow schools to start teaching Botechnical education in the, in the middle school. The other thing I think that we have done too that, that's going to help our education program here in, in Alaska is the uh, scholarship program, which is both uh, merit-based and, uh, and uh, needs-based. And if you, you know, do want to go to college and you're willing to take those tougher classes, and you get at least a C plus average or better, then um, you're, you're going to get a, a scholarship of some sort to, to come to any college here in, in Alaska. And I know some parents have called me and said, well, I want my kids to go to the University of Washington or something. Well, the whole idea here that, of giving out state money is to develop and grow our own, our own uh, state colleges. And frankly, I think our colleges here are very good. Okay, since it's a question that's of particular interest to the college students, I've been told that they'd like to have each of the candidates answer that question. So uh, let's just pass the mic down and have each of the candidates ans uh, answer the question, what is your definition of and your position on education reform? Ms. Farrakhan. Thank you very much. Uh, we absolutely need to take a look at education. I was just uh, at a, a committee hearing where we were talking about and looking at, uh, in fourth grade, our reading levels are underrepresented under Alaska state uh, testing standards. We tell parents that, uh, that their children are doing well, and then when you compare them to the national average, they are way below, uh, upwards of 40% below those national average. So we absolutely need to do something in K through 12. We need to work together with K through 12 parents and in the classroom with those teachers. In eighth grade, we're slipping on math. Um, we need to do the same thing. We over-report that our kids are doing well. Teachers think that they receive the report card. Uh, they say that our kids are passing and that they'll get their high school diplomas. And then when they go to test for college, they have to take remedial courses. That costs the parents and the students more. Um, we absolutely need to take a look. Hey, Senator Davis, uh, your definition of and position on education reform. All right, thank you. I'm glad that you asked us for an explanation on what is education reform, because many people have different ideas about what it is and what we should be doing. I know that there's room for improvement in the Anchorage School District as well as throughout the whole state of Alaska for our children. First of all, we don't always give enough money to support the school system the way it should be supported, and you don't give them the basic money that they need in order to fund uh, books, have the teachers have their salaries increase when they need to be. There are a lot of things to look at. There are a lot of laws that's out there that's towards the best interest of our children, which we still don't have on the books. First of all, we don't have pre-K. The earliest we can start off helping our children in pre-K, the better off we're going to be. Here we are with all the money that we have in this state and one of the few states that don't have at least 50% of their children going into pre-K. And here we are, we had a three-year pilot program. We did not put any money into it this year. We have K-12 and nothing else. But uh, one thing that I'm proud of, the fact that we did have some school districts decide to go with the Common Court standards. Even though the state has not adopted those standards, they say they have adopted standards that would uh, make them even higher than the ones that we have in pre-K, in, in the course standards. But that's not necessarily true. We don't know the outcomes of that. The report that has been given one thing is saying that our children are doing quite well, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. When you look at it at the national level, they are below those standards. So we have a lot of work to be done. And there's work that needs to be done, early funding education so that when the teachers don't have to have green cards, pink Time. cards given to them because we don't know how much money we're going to put in the budget for education, there's a correction that can be done on that and I hope that we can continue to improve there. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Bell, uh, what is your definition of and your position on education reform? 
you know, this is going to be tougher and tougher to answer as this mic moves down the table because everybody's pretty well covered the subject. I agree with most of the things that have been said. One of the things I'd like to see this do is uh, more students in the Whammy program. Our oldest son went through the Whammy program. He did his first year of med school here at UAA and then finished up the rest of it at uh, killed me, the University of Washington, being a Washington State graduate, but told him as long as he never brought anything purple or gold in my house, we'd get along fine. <laughs> but I also worked on, uh, with uh, Washington State University to try to set up a summer program for veterinary science, because Washington State is one of the best veterinary schools in the nation, and they're willing to give us two slots if the legislature will fund a similar type program. So I think I'd like to see us do that. The other thing is, on K through 12, the formula that the state uses to fund that, I think should be inflation proofed. Because what happens is every year, in essence, we're giving less money per student. And I think we should be keeping up with inflation. Thank you, Senator McGuire. Your definition of the position on education reform. Uh, I thank you for the question. I, I think this is um, obviously oil taxes have been the big discussion um, during this election cycle, but um, this is such an important issue. And I do feel like we are um, at a crossroads right now in the state. When I grew up and attended public schools here in Alaska, we were in the top tier for in a variety of categories. We had good teachers, we had um, good numbers. And I, um, I just know from being out in my district and, and serving in the legislature that those, those numbers just simply aren't true anymore. Parents in my district no longer feel like public education in many ways um, gives their children a meaningful opportunity um, to compete in, in life. And I think that that's a sad thing. Um, so in terms of what we can do, I want to compliment Kevin on his leadership in the Education Committee. I really do think that he went in there, rolled up his sleeves, and tackled um, some of the early reforms that are needed. Um, I think there's a lot more that needs to be done though. When you look at the average amount that we spend per student in the Anchorage School District and in rural Alaska, we ought to be able to get great education for our kids. Every single Alaska student, if that's going to be our constitutional mandate, should be um, coming out of our schools as an exceptional student. And so, I think it goes back to the statutory change that we made years ago that said 70% of what we put in in our funding needs to stay in the classroom. Um, through the years, that has become eroded. Um, there are exceptions that come in um, for administrative spending and things. So I think um, working with the school board to try and get more of that money in the classroom is going to be important. Um, but I think this dialogue needs to take place across Alaska now, and I appreciate the question. Um, on the higher education level, if I could just finish by saying that um, I agree with Bob and the Whammy program. We have a shortage of medical personnel from the nursing um, level all the way up to doctors. So increasing Whammy and um, increasing our high tech um, and low tech school opportunities is important. Thank you. Your uh, definition of and position on education reform. Well, I would hope that it would include getting rid of no child left behind qualified exit exam. I don't like programs that punish but don't reward. If we want all of our students to pass tests, let's have them pass ACT, SAT, word keys, um, military ASTAT, something that will do them some good. And as far as reform, what we want is every student needs to be able to have a chance to graduate from high school. They need to start with, every time a student is doing poorly, we need to step in and help that person, write them, and, and do it. I've been teaching um, algebra and helping kids graduate from high school, and one of the things that I object to is when I crack their test, give them back to them, have them recrack it, they're like, you mean I have to fix this now? Because in the high school qualifying, in the standardized tests, they never see the answers. They never find out what they do. As far as the college, there's I can probably talk until I'm stopped. But we need to look at student loans. And if we want people to stay in Alaska, we should determine what we want from them and maybe to do some partial um, cancellation of or assisting them in paying back their, their student loans. 
as far as what you can do is get involved in the community, get partnerships with businesses, and um, do some original research to solve our energy problems. Um, anything that you're committed to, that's what you need to do and connect the applied learning to the theory that you're learning. And thank you. Thank you. Representative Gardner, uh, your definition of an institution on education. Well, to me, education reform is any effort that is focused on getting better results than we're currently getting. And uh, I wanted to start out by saying one thing that hasn't been mentioned, and that is that it is possible in the Anchorage School District and in some other school districts around the state to get a really fine education. Um, and some kids do. However, not everybody is, and our results are not, on the whole, acceptable. Um, I think that, of course, funding is, is one thing that contributes if you, can, if you fund schools adequately. But more importantly, um, it's been mentioned about vocational education, because as it's true, not every student is going to go to college, and even students who are college-bound can benefit from vocational training, um, even certifications. Um, I would have a, a really robust voluntary pre-K program because we know that many kids in Alaska start kindergarten with a working vocabulary that's a third of what is anticipated by school districts across the nation. Um, I would put meat in our truancy laws. Uh, it's required that kids who are enrolled at school go to school, but we have a tremendous problem, and there's been press about this recently, and there's very little that we are currently doing when kids are chronically truant, and if they're not at school, they're not going to learn, and they're not going to be part of everything that's going on and it builds on itself. As you slide, it gets harder and harder to catch up. I would also do away with the high school graduation qualifying exam. I think it was a good idea, but it was altered, watered down. Um, it's essentially meaningless, and I say meaningless in the sense that it doesn't promote graduation and it hinders it for some students. Um, it doesn't tell the student possible employers or other higher education places at how that student is doing and whether or not the student has really mastered the material as it's supposed to do. I think we want to have high standards for everybody. And one way we try to do that is rather than having the legislature require that you take four years of math or three years of a foreign language, we're trying to do it differently and that's by having a merit scholarship that's designed to encourage students to choose to take rigorous courses. Time. And hopefully that will build demand from their families and their school boards to have the resources they need to make that possible. Senator Kiesel, uh, your uh, position on the definition of education. You know, our founders were very focused on the importance of ed an educated population. They emphasized that and wanted education to be a focus of our government. You know, I mentioned earlier, you don't learn everything you need to know here in college. When you get your four-year de four degree, you're going to go out into the job market, possibly. Maybe you'll go on to graduate school. But regardless, when you leave here, you are probably going to have to enter a mentorship program in whatever profession you choose, because you aren't going to learn it all here. You're not going to learn the practical application. So really, education is a lifelong process. This question is narrowed, though, I think particularly to K through 12, which is what I'll confine my, my comments to here on. I am concerned when we take federal funding that we have to follow those federal requirements, and that constrains what our teachers can do. It isn't, these are not requirements that apply here in Alaska in many cases. I'm a real advocate for career and technical education for all students. How many of you that are in your four-year programs right now could have gone out and gotten a job when you graduated from high school? Did you have a practical skill? Could you have worked as a carpenter or a welder? These are good paying jobs that could help you pay for a college career. But if you don't have those skills, well, these are things we can offer in the high schools. King Career Center, wonderful example. You learn science and math by learning carpentry skills, welding, auto mechanic. My husband was a 20 year teacher in math, high school math and science, and he used to take his high school students out surveying. His second degree was as a civil engineer, so he knew how to survey. But it gave the kids a practical concept of how these math skills were going to apply in real life. It's amazing how many of his students went on to become engineers. Teachers inspire their students. 
Oh, well, two minutes. What's your definition of and position on education reform? Well, I'm not, that's really as simple as it is. It's kind of complex. I'm not sure where you're applying it to. So, I'm just a simple man. I'm not degreed or published or really accomplished. Uh, it seems to me that your school district is using you as appendages for uh, revenue generation. Not real familiar with the college, except the fact that they seem to be in the oil pockets company and the politics. Uh, they seem to be in the oil company's pockets, along with the politicians who hang out in Juneau. They don't want to be here and have you be a part of a vibrant new society that has it all. They want to sneak out the back door on you now. The point is this, when you look at a school district, Carol Cuomo was no longer there, because that's what they do now, they move people out so there's no history of accountability, they're just talking and dodging circles. 89% of that money goes to their revenue. They don't give a crap about you. They get to the crap about you, they want to know about your mother and father, how they love you, and how they understand their roles, and how they sit with you at night instead of working their asses off chasing the money. You know something, ladies and gentlemen? There ain't a creature in the universe that eats that money. You go home tonight, you put some of that gold and silver and dollar bill in that bowl, pour some milk over that stuff, see how it eats up. Not a one. It's about energy. And these people don't want to deal with energy because they don't want to deal with the complexity because they can run off to Juno and just throw the hatch. Now, coming back to education. It is a marvelous moment, but it's about connection. And if you lose the mission, you lose it all. They have lost the mission, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what that mission was? I'll tell you, because I was there. It was a handshake. I don't know, have I got enough time here for this? I don't want to be... you got 10 seconds. Yeah, well, I'll pass. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's uh, see what we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go back and go around uh, one minute answers on, on the questions. And then we'll take questions from the audience. So if anybody has questions, uh, be prepared. Well, we'll ask you to step up to the mic here in a second. Let's start uh, with Mr. Kendall, and we'll just go down the line with, uh, with a different question for each candidate. Uh, by the luck of the draw, half of these are from Republicans, uh, college Republicans, half of college Democrats. Let's start with Paul in uh, one minute. Tell us, uh, what is your position on natural resource development? Well, I think you have a chance to have it all. But because your leadership has gone off the edge and disconnected from you and the mission, and the mission, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was to be a more free person to understand the wonders of it all. And I was there. We were excited about that space and the creatures and the journey of life and the 100 billion galaxies. And instead, they got you running off chasing money and debt loads and, and uh, contrived and denied economies, false economies. Just, it's just uh, terribly, terribly, terrible injustice. So, I'll, I'll just let that run on. I know you're short on time. Fair enough. Uh, let's go down to uh, Senator Diesel. Uh, what is the role of government? Well, in my mind, the role of government is to do those things that the individual can't do for themselves. For example, building a road. Most of us don't have the skills or the equipment or the revenue needed to construct a road. But we can join together. My neighborhood joined together and built our road, maintains it, we paved it. That's a small government. It's a community uh, council or a community neighborhood kind of, of group. You have to, um, as you look at interstates, clearly you have to expand that. That's the role of government, doing what people could not otherwise do for themselves. What are some things they could do for themselves? Jobs, creating new jobs. I don't think we need government stimulating the economy to create more jobs. If we create a, a, an atmosphere where entrepreneurs can start a business and not be taxed. Time. Thank you. Uh, next question. Um, do you or will you go against ideological lines if the policy will benefit your constituents? I would hope that every vote every one of us takes is something that we believe benefits our constituents, not only our own immediate districts, but to take a bigger view of Alaska as a whole, and not only for today, but taking a long-term view. And that is really our obligation. 
And I, I'll just take a second since I have some time to say I'm glad that this round you're not saying the questions are Democrat or Republican questions. Because that was really bothering me because the issues are not Democrat or Republican issues. The issues are Alaskan issues. And we are all representing Alaska. And I think it makes a, a much better forum. Uh, next question. Uh, although it sounds cliche, today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Name one important issue our state will face in the next 10 years and how we can be uh, uh, prepared to tackle it. I was wondering how the first question was going to Oh, how we can handle it. Thank you. Um, I think one thing would be the opportunity to put a gas pipeline um, through to the tidewater from uh, Anchorage or from the North Slope. Um, I would suggest Valdez because back when I was much younger, I worked on getting the approval for the trans Alaska pipeline. When we got that, we had a corridor that I believe would allow six pipelines to go through there. I think it's about time we do it. Uh, 30 years is enough to wait. I think there's enough gas up there. And I would encourage our youth that are coming up to develop the skills that are needed for the good jobs, both good paying and responsible ones that uh, will enable Alaskans to be doing the work. Thank you. Uh, for Senator McGuire. Since Alaska receives a large amount of federal funding and in view of the current federal budget situation, which federal program would you like to see cut? Well, I think one of the ones that was just alluded to, um, No Child Left Behind, is a great place to start. I think, um, I didn't get to mention it in my remarks, but it, it certainly cost the school district um, an exorbitant amount of money, and I don't believe that it delivers the kinds of results that um, that certainly Alaskans are looking for in the in their education of their of their children. Um, I also think Medicaid is an area that is ripe for cuts and reform. Um, it's a it's a very difficult area in that certainly there are disadvantaged um, people within our community that have health care needs, but it is a part of our budget right now that is now outgrown education, and that's a very sad fact. So I think those two areas. Okay, uh, Mr. Bell, what does the average American and average Alaskan care about? Well, first of all, before I answer that question, I want to answer part of Lisa's question. The first thing I'd like to see the federal government cut is the management of our fish and game. We're the only state in the union that they manage our fish and game on federal lands, and I'd like them to just get the hell out of here. So what do Alaskans and Americans care about? They care about jobs, they care about security, they care about their country and their state. And, and most of them care about the private sector creating jobs and creating wealth so that they can, they can have happy and productive lives. You know, I worry about my grandkids, even my kids, that in the future, is the economy going to be strong enough for them to, to get good jobs and have good opportunities so they can raise families like Candace and I have? And we raised five kids here in Alaska. I hope that my kids and grandkids can do the same thing. And I think that's what Americans care about, is quality of life. Okay. Now, uh, the next question we'll uh, give to both uh, uh, Ms. Bergman and Ms. Davis, uh, since they're uh, running in the same race. Uh, you'll each have two minutes. Uh, in November 2011, Forbes magazine ranked Anchorage as the fifth most dangerous city in America. Anchorage uh, also has, a recent, has seen a recent spike in violent crime. What can be done to make us feel safer? Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done to make us feel safe. One of the main things that we have, we do not have enough public safety people on the streets. We cut budgets and cut back on staff like policemen and other people that serve in the rural areas. We don't put enough people there to cover those areas. The other things that we can be doing is you do have a suicide prevention council that meet and they work on the issues that cause a lot of the problems that we have and some of the violence that we're having on the street. I think that's a good thing. And the governor has his uh, campaign where he say respect. But you just can't say the words and not put the money there to provide the services that need to be provided. 
I do think that we have improved in those areas. I think that we have a lot of work to do, and we must continue to move forward in that. But as far as the safety on the street, I, I pretty much feel safe, even though I know we are having more crimes committed in this year than we had last year at the same time. But in the end, it's up to us, each individual, to try to do the best that we can to support each other and look out for each other in your neighborhoods and not just depend on the police to do all the work. There's a job for all of us to do. Okay. Uh, Representative Fairclough, what can be done to make, Anchorage, uh, to make us feel safer? Thank you. Well, I, I've always thought we need to know our neighbors, uh, to say hello and to make sure that you know where everyone's kids are and who those kids are so that we can keep them safer. Uh, certainly, uh, the governor has proposed, and we have started in rural Alaska, additional community service volunteers and put those together. We need to have working EMS systems that can identify your home and where they're at. I served on the um, mayor's 9-11 uh, task force when we had a catastrophe out in the Inca River area where we had a difficult time with EMS responding because of um, non-consistent data that's moving through our um, utility systems or places where we identify that. We need to support our firefighters and our police department and our EMS with appropriate equipment. Um, and in general, just make sure that we can communicate and uh, be ready for those emergencies. I was here in the 1964 earthquake. Uh, our families got together uh, in one home. We worked together to make ourselves safer, and it's not what uh, you can do for your government, but what we can do for our neighbors. Thank you. Uh, uh, Senator Meyer, what is your position on the Second Amendment? Well, obviously, I, I support the Second Amendment. That was one of your uh, questions was, the, do I have a gun? And yes, I have a gun, and, and I think people should uh, have the right to, uh, to bear arms. So I support the Second Amendment wholeheartedly. Okay. Let's get uh, some questions from the audience, and if uh, if you could direct it to either a, a candidate or a set of candidates if they're in the same race, we'll give it to both of them. Uh, feel free to get your uh, question. We'll give uh, the candidates two minutes each to uh, respond. All right. First is actually a quick yes or no question that I'd like to direct to everybody. We've already seen that 80 percent of you don't approve of gay marriage. Uh, however, do you believe in the equal opportunity and uh, equal employment opportunities and protection for our homosexual citizens? Yes, overwhelmingly less except for the two that won't raise their placards, which I noticed was something that we saw a lot in the yes or no question. All right, moving on. Uh, Alaska's constitution is a uh, beacon of liberty and privacy. It, uh, more than 30 nations have based their nation, uh, national constitutions on our state constitution, and the reason that is is because our privacy is protected and we have a strong set of, uh, of uh, liberty values. Do, do you have a question? I do have a question. That's the lead up to it. So my question is, uh, since uh, obviously most of you have, uh, obviously 100% of you said that you pray, uh, I was wondering what you will do, especially um, in regards to homosexuals and people seeking uh, abortions, uh, what you will do for the secular vote, and do you believe that you represent the secular vote in Alaska? Because I think it is a reasonable uh, portion. Is there a particular candidate you'd like to answer that question? Um, well, if anyone would like to say they do represent the secular vote, right. I would like to direct. Representative Gardner, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to say that I was one who didn't put up a placard either way on that particular question because I think it's a private matter and I don't believe it should be part of a discussion like this, whether or not one prays it's personal. And again, I, I just want to say on every issue, we represent our constituents, our districts, and the entire state, and every Alaskan is my constituent in some regard, and I expect that whether I agree with them on every issue or not, I still need to hear what people say and make my decision to be in, on any issue as informed as I possibly can. Do you not believe oh, that? Oh, oh, oh. Let, let's let the next gentleman in line. It's a quick question. Well, it, do you have your opportunity. Let's let the rest of everybody else uh, ask their question. Catch after. Hi, I'm Chris with AK Rhythm. I'm chief editor, military veteran, former student senator, former student here, so I've been around. Uh, this is about job creations within the prisoner reentry system, as uh, I was approaching the class before. Uh, and this is from a 141-page document that was produced by the state that the DOC's approach to successful prisoner reentry is not just on a single program, but a uh, philosophy central to the culture and the way of doing business. 
Um, the question is, court view is one of the bigger things about looking up somebody, and the majority of the cases are, dis are either dismissed. In other states, they use court view as a paid service. As a to of job creation and preventing people from not getting jobs, what would you do in the government to prevent that from being an access to the individuals for their jobs? Because right now, court view is a, what do you call it, quote unquote, system to judge an individual. Uh, for example, there's an individual that I know that had a 20 year thing to go, he can't get a job. He's been trying for 20 is years. Is there a particular candidate you'd like to uh, answer? The whole panel can answer this if you want, or anybody. Is, is there anybody on the panel that would Mr. Reynolds, take yeah. that up? Anyone. So the question right. is, what would be the approach to court view to prevent jobs from being deterred to Okay, represent our I think court view should be public information. Um, people can use it, look it up. You go to Alaska, you look up a name of somebody. If you are, for example, a landlord and you're going to investigate a tenant and see, um, is this something, some person I want to entrust my property to? Um, I was recently in a car accident where somebody rear-ended me and I wanted to see what his driving record was um, because if he had a pattern of driving accidents, I was going to go ahead and pursue the issue. The fact is the damage was really minor and he had no record of driving accidents and so I called him and told him, forget it, I'll just live with the dings. Um, and I, I think it's fine. Now when you sign on to court view for people who may not know, it has um, a disclaimer saying just because somebody was charged with something doesn't mean they were convicted or even guilty off the time the cases are closed um, with it, or withdrawn or whatever. So it, the user needs to be responsible about how they use it and that's true of, of anything on the internet as a matter of fact. And how does okay. that explain high unemployment rates? Oh, actually, let's let the next person have their question. If we have time, we'll, we'll get back. Actually, I'll give you guys on my card because it's a big thing. All right, fair enough. Uh, go ahead, uh, question, and if you can direct it to a, a candidate okay. or something. Um, I'll give you a brief. That's a long yeah. um, I'd like to direct my question to um, Bob Bell. Um, Governor Romney states that the, about every one of us pays no taxes, is on the government gravy train, and loves it. Can you identify one of these people on the site? Mr. Mr. Bell? Um, I said, Governor Romney states that about every other one of us pays no taxes or is on the government gravy chain. Can you identify one of these people on site and how? Well, first of all, you know, people run for office often say things that other people ascribe meaning to. Uh, President Obama said that all uh, of us that run our business didn't do that ourselves, that the government did it for us. Well, he didn't really mean that. And Governor Romney didn't really mean that the 47% of the people that don't pay income taxes are dependent on the government. Many of them are quite wealthy. Many of them are retired military. So he didn't mean that. What he said was, could have been couched better. So we can't take statements like that and assign meaning to them, and that's what you're trying to do here. And I'm, and I'm giving you an example how we can do it on the other side. When the Republicans jumped up and said, President Obama said that if you started your own business, you didn't really do that, he didn't mean that. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, because we can say there's lots of people in this room that don't pay income taxes, but they're certainly not dependent on the government. Okay, let's get the, the next question from the next gentleman I'm on. I'm going to go ahead and address a yes or no question to the entire panel. Um, basically, this is Constitution Week, so as a theme, um, I believe that the founders created the Constitution to limit the scope and power of the federal government. We also have a Tenth Amendment in there that asserts state rights. I would like to know how many of you would be willing to introduce the nullification bills of federal bills that you feel that the federal government has used that goes beyond their enumerated powers. So you'd like to know their position on state nullification of federal laws? Yes, I would, and I'd like, if anyone else would like All to. Right. Hey, answer yes, if you're for state nullification of federal laws, no, if you would be against that. Uh, do you have yes. a question? Yes, my question is, Are you? would you be in favor of state nullification of federal laws that you feel the 
federal government has gone beyond their powers in enacting. Okay. Yeah, yes, if you're for it, uh, no, if you would be against it. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, if there are uh, uh, no more questions, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll go to one minute closing statements from each of the candidates, and uh, let's start with uh, Paul since uh, we started down with uh, Kevin Meyer. Uh, what's that? Oh, oh, oh. This is my last question. Sorry. Is um, <clears throat> that our question? Sorry. At the Chamber of Commerce luncheon recently, Governor Murkowski stated that the oil companies own North Slope Oil. Is this true? Um, it says in the last state constitution states that the people own the mineral resources of the state. Okay, um, why don't we have uh, uh, Mr. Rapp? I'm to direct and send all the candidates. Well, well, okay, let's do a 30 second. Uh, of course, we're saying 30 seconds. So let's give each candidate about 30 seconds. Is your question uh, Does the state own North Slope oil? Yeah, and when it states in the Alaska state constitution that um, the oil re mineral resources are owned by the people. Okay, well, we can actually do that as a yes, no, I guess. Why don't we do yes, no? Then does the state own uh, North Slope oil, yes uh, or no? Yes. Does that satisfy? Okay. Let's do a, a one minute closing. Let's start down with uh, Paul Kendall um, on, on the other side and we'll work our way back. Uh, one minute. Real quick. Uh, First of all, I have a list back there, 50 upset you points. And I would hope it would stimulate you to get the problem solving as opposed to these conversations don't go anywhere. This is a new energy design we think is breached in the next six to 18 months. Your society has a chance to be one of the first societies in the history of mankind. All your resources can be developed, but you can't have your people hang out in Juneau, period. I don't do the yes and no signs, ladies and gentlemen. There's something, you, you can argue with the brutal efficiency of them, but there's something that's, that disconnects us. I want to see their eyes. I want to see their lion eyes. I want to see the tremor. I want to see the emotion. That's what we do. That's how we learn. That's how we grow is to engage. And I'm not sure I'll, I came here for you young people, but I'm not too sure I'll attend any more of these popcorn discussions here. Now, I want a discussion. I want an argumentative. I want the subject detailed, and I want fearless discussions. I'm done with this stuff watching my country be taken apart. And Alaska is a very special place, and you're going to lose a very special time if you don't get your leader's ass out of Juneau. There's no reason to go to Juneau, period. Period. We love you, Paul. Senator Diesel. Thanks, Casey. I want to answer that last question that was posed about Alaska owning uh, the oil. Technically, Alaska owns the mineral rights. They sell leases to property on the North Slope where a company thinks there may be oil. That's sold for a price. The state gets that money. But the state still owns that oil. The company invests in infrastructure and exploration. They pull that oil out of the ground. But when that oil is put in a pipeline and leaves that lease property, it becomes the property of the oil company, except for our royalty oil, the 12.5% of that oil or its value that belongs to the state of Alaska. So the question is not a yes no answer. Like many of the questions that were asked here, these are not easy questions. And if you think any of the people running here are going to give you snap answers and bumper sticker answers, if they're doing that, they're not giving you an honest answer because these are complex issues that we all have to study in depth. She's absolutely right. And thank you for saying that. And I just want to say, um, I think Paul Kendall was 100% right about what, at least one of the things he said, and that is, he said Alaska is a very special place. And of course it is. That's why we live here. My husband and I came up here 20 years ago, and our deal was, we brought three little kids. The deal was we'd stay for a year and see how we like it. But I can tell you we liked it just fine. We love it. We still do. And like everybody here, I want to help make a better future for Alaska. Um, you'll do that with your votes and hopefully informed and questioning votes and hold our feet to the fire afterwards. So what is it about? Remember the adage, if the economy stupid? Well, it is. It's about an economy. It's about jobs. It's about families. It's about neighborhoods. It's about schools. It's about planning for the future. It's about having a fiscal plan, saving money, 
and also spending money investing in the infrastructure of this state, having good, safe schools, having roads and bridges Fine. and a public safety. So that is it, and thank you all for being here and for listening to us all. Thank you for coming, and I have a great deal of faith in all of you. Uh, I want you to encourage you to do things to stretch out and don't feel concerned about making a mistake or being embarrassed. Um, I try to give my algebra students a hard time, say, hey, you can get up and do this, you can do this. So when I found that I was complaining about health insurance, why the state was turning it away, why weren't we building the pipeline, why aren't we helping the Japanese when they're changing from nuclear to liquefied or uh, liquefaction of natural gas, why aren't we helping them? So nothing seemed to be harder for me to do than run for office. So I decided to do it. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and I encourage all of you to step up to the plate, too. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And I want to say thank you. My um, youngest son, Grayson, is six years old behind you, and you've all given him a wonderful example um, of citizenship and that you stayed after your classes tonight to, to be here with us. And again, I thank you. Um, just a few um, remarks that I, I want to say. Um, I think our future is, as I mentioned, about innovation as well. I do think that getting our taxes back to a competitive level so that we can continue to attract oil and gas companies that want to develop our natural resources is critical. Our gold, our minerals, and all those other things, we are a natural resource-based state. There's no question about it. And when you look at why we were granted statehood, um, that certainly was all part of the record. So we're not gonna move away from that. We shouldn't want to move away from that. But as we look forward to the future, the innovation is gonna be a part of it. And you here, as the young people with the bright minds um, going out into the world, I want you to continue to think about that. Think about patents. Think about where those technological advances are going to be. Um, and frankly, as an Alaskan, this is one place where geographical location is on your side. We have more opportunities here. Um, there are two funds. I'll just wrap up by saying I have a website, www.lisamulgar.com, and on it, it will lead you to two innovation funds that I recently created in emerging energy technology and energy infrastructure. Okay, to remind you, I bought Bill. I think what I'd like to do is tell you, what do I bring to the Senate? And that is 35 years, 38 years of running a business here in Alaska, raising a family here in Alaska. I served in public office six years on the Anchorage Assembly. And I can bring all of that to bear in the Senate. You know, I always felt that somebody should succeed in what they do and then run for office so they can bring that expertise and that knowledge to the, public, to the public good. And I think I can do that. And one other thing that I'd like to do is to do everything I can do to keep the Senate committee system from distorting what we're doing down there in Juneau. The committee system should be for gathering information and vetting frivolous stuff. It shouldn't be for killing House Bill 110 on ACES, for killing Denali Kid Care, for Kevin, Coastal Zone Management, and all those things. We should debate everything on the Senate floor and vote on it so everybody knows what we're doing. And I assure you, I'll do everything I can do to make that happen. I just want to say to everyone that's present, particularly the students that are here, this is a great opportunity for you to learn and also decide on which way you want to go. Perhaps you might want to run for a political office, or maybe you just want to do some public service job. But this is good volunteer work for you, and I'm glad to see that you're involved with your uh, student government here. I've lived in this city for 40 years. Lived in Alaska longer than I've lived in the other state. I raised two children here. I have four grandchildren. Three of them have graduated from college. One uh, graduated outside the state but came back. So all my grandchildren, and I have one that's now in middle school, they are all here in Alaska. They got a good education while they were here. I want to continue to serve 
in the capacity that I serve because I do believe that many of the bills that I have introduced need to be reintroduced again, Fine. and I would like to go there to continue the work that I started. Good evening. Thank you for having us, and thank you for being involved. We, we need your help. Um, I need your help so that my children will have jobs here in our future. America is $16 trillion in debt, and our future is being controlled by countries sometimes that don't support us. You might not think that's relevant in Alaska, but it is. Our budget is on a growth pattern that we can't sustain. For the last four years in House Finance, I've tried to have a conversation in the House, with the Senate, with the administration, and with anyone who will listen about fiscal policy, about looking at where Alaska's money comes from and where we're sending it. We have great things and great opportunities, but we need you to be engaged. We have to get past the sound bites. Anyone can give you a few words that sound right. You need to dig deeper and look at people's voting records. You need to call them up and be involved. It makes a difference if you call your representative with a beef or, or a praise. Thank you. Hey, now, there's Senator Kemmer. All right, thank you. I, I get to start and I get to finish here. Thank you, Casey. Casey, thank you for uh, moderating the program tonight. Um, you know, I'm sitting here in this beautiful building and I'm um, just wondering, well, how did we get this building? And, and the bottom line is it's oil. Our natural resources, oil, is what is what paid for this building. It's what paid for the health science building. It's what paid for the uh, Conical Phillips Technical Center over here. The new engineering building we're going to get over here, and, and the sports center that's already starting. So, oil paid pays for 90% of, of our money at the state level, and um, it, it helps offset some of your tuition costs, which I know you you think tuition is a lot now. But just think if we didn't have uh, oil production paying 90%. So. Um, I think that's the key, uh, and, and that's something we got to deal with right away. Is how do we get more oil in the pipeline? You've all heard it's on the decline. How do we how do we change that? Well, you need to elect people who, who are going to uh, are willing to look at the oil tax situation and, and change the oil taxes so that we can encourage more production, not less production, and get more oil in the pipeline so that we can can, can continue to have the quality. Of life. All right, let's give a round of applause. Uh, one of the round of applause to all the candidates. Thank you. I'm sure they'll, uh, stick around if you have a question you'd like to ask. But, uh,